Hello, I'm Steve Grisetti, co-founder of MoviePix.com and author of the MoviePix.com guides to Adobe Premiere Elements and Adobe Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements together. And this is part one of our eight-part series called Basic Training with Adobe Premiere Elements. And throughout this course, I'm going to be working with Premiere Elements 15. When you first start up the program, you will usually get, anyway, the welcome screen. You have the option, of course, to bypass the welcome screen simply by going to this little cog at the upper right corner and selecting the option go directly into the program if you'd prefer. Otherwise, from here, you have the option to launch the video editor, Premiere Elements. The Elements Organizer, which is the media file management program that comes bundled with Photoshop Elements and Premiere Elements. And if you have Photoshop Elements installed on your computer too, you can select the option to go directly into here. And you can do this from either welcome screen, from Premiere Elements or Photoshop Elements. Either welcome screen gives you these same three options. Let's go into the program. And the program is a terrific little program that's very easy to use. You notice how clean the workspace is. We haven't got a lot of extra stuff hanging around. And many of the tools that we'll need are available on the toolbar here on the right-hand side of the program, which we'll explore here throughout the course. Setting up your project is very easy because the program essentially sets up the project for you in most cases. And I'll tell you what to do in the rare case that it doesn't. To add media to your project, you simply go to the Add Media button here in the upper left. There's also an Add Media button in the Quick View workspace. Now there is a little bit of a difference. You'll notice when I add media here in the Quick View workspace, I'm just going to go to Files and Folders and grab some media that's already on my computer. You notice that when I add a couple of clips here, that they are added directly to my timeline. In Expert View, the media that you add is not added directly to your timeline. Instead, it's added to a Project Assets panel that's up here in the upper left-hand corner of the program. And we can expand that simply by dragging on the lower right-hand corner. There we go, big or small as you'd like. And notice that the program will automatically set up your project based on the very first clip you add to your timeline. I'm going to go down here to the timeline. I'm going to zoom in on it. You can do that either by using the zoom sliders here on the upper right of the timeline or simply using the plus and minus keys on your keyboard to zoom in and out. You'll notice that above my first clip, there is not a yellow orange line. That's the key here. If you do not see a yellow orange line above the first clip you add, to your project, then you'll know that the program has automatically set up the project based on that first clip. And in fact, if I go here to edit, project settings general, you'll see that it has indeed set it up for 1920 by 1080, 30 FPS drop frame. That's basically NTSC high definition video that came directly off my Canon camcorder and the program set up automatically for it. That's great that the program does this automatically and it does about 95-96% of the time. In the old days, you had to set up the program manually, you had to set up your project manually, and if you messed up, if you didn't set it up correctly, there was no way to fix it midway through the program. So it's great that since version 11, the program does most of the work for you automatically. Now there are a few rare occasions when the program will not set up your project based on the first clip. If you are using, for instance, photos exclusively in your video, then of course the program can't set up its project settings based on your photo. So of course, when you add photos to your timeline, you're going to see a little yellow orange line above them as soon as you add them. Also, sometimes with MOV files, those are QuickTime files. Now QuickTime files are very complicated. They can be made up of hundreds of codecs. Codecs are the compression system that your camcorder uses to create the file. Because there's so many possible codecs within an MOV file or a QuickTime file, sometimes the program is not able to set up automatically based on their first clip. If that happens, it's as simple as setting up your project manually. Now again, you do have to do this before you start work on your project. You can change it midway through, but let's show you how to do it. Go to the File menu. You can also, from the Welcome menu, select the option for New Project. We'll go to New, Project, and I'm going to select No, I don't want to save what's on the timeline right now. On your New Project screen, click on the button to Change Settings. Select that and then select the settings for your video. Now, the workhorse for current video production or consumer video production is this one right here. Full HD AVCHD. And you notice that's listed under AVCHD options. This 30 frames per second 
1080i is the basic setup for most uh, consumer video that's being shot right now. That's starting to change. We're starting to see more in 24 frames per second. We're starting to see more with progressive rather than interlaced frames. Don't let any of that confuse you. The important thing is you need to know what your uh, specs are of your video. If you can't figure that out based on what the settings are in your camcorder, come on down to moviepix.com and at the community forum, we'll show you how to use programs like Media Info to open up that file and find out what that video is made out of. Because the closer the program matches its project settings to your video, the smoother it's going to perform and the better your results are going to be. So you do want a perfect match here. So let's assume that we're working with full HD and that it's 30, by the way, 30 of course is under NTSC video if you happen to be in Europe. You'll be working under PAL and there is a 25 frames per second uh, 1080 that is sort of the equivalent to it there. Once we select the project preset based on what our MOV file or whatever uh, video is that we're working with, click OK and then do not let the program change them. In other words, check this option here on the new project force selected project settings on this project and that will keep the program from changing your project settings based on what you add to your timeline and now click OK and you're good to go and now you'll be able to add your files and you should not see an orange line above your clips until you start adding effects to them. Now in part two we're going to take a look at getting video from your camcorder and then we'll continue on and we'll build a whole project here. I hope you'll stay with me for the whole eight sessions of basic training with Premier Elements. I'm Steve Grisetti, moviepix.com. Thanks for joining me and we'll see you soon.